So what are do neutrophils do? So the one big function of neutrophils is something called degranulation. So what is granulation? Or what are granules? So degranulation is when neutrophils have these stores of toxic chemicals and degranulation is when they release these chemicals to their external environment. So this is how us this is degranulation are, is how neutrophils attack pathogens by releasing toxic chemicals such as defensins, again those proteins that poke holes in pathogens, and enzymes that produce something called reactive oxygen species that's a little more advanced chemistry, but you might have heard of things called free radicals. If you've taken chemistry or organic chemistry, you know what a free radical is. Or if you had some chemistry, you notice that in a typical chem stable chemical, electrons come in pairs, right? But the thing about free radicals, you have an unpaired electron. So what happens with these free radicals? These free radical chemicals try to rip off another electron from another chemical. So this helps, this is kind of attacking the chemical structure, or actually the sub atomic structure of other chemicals. So again, these free radicals, they help to attack other chemicals, but you're trying to attack the chemicals that make up the structure of a pathogen. And also enzymes that degrade extracellular matrices. So again, this is the scaffolding, the structural part of your connective tissue. So this also helps to actually increase the movement of cells throughout your body. And, and these chemicals are also toxic to regular cells. So free radicals doesn't care if something's a pathogen or if it's one of your own cells. And defensins, luckily these are specific to pathogens. But yeah, actually these enzymes right here, these can also attack your own body as well. So neutrophils, this is another reason why when you have an infection, you encounter all of this, these changes that are also painful as well. So neutrophil functions, so degranulation, this release of toxic chemicals in its environment, again, they not only make it are toxic to pathogens, they're also toxic to your own cells if in sufficient quantity or long enough exposure. They're also phagocytic, so they're also able to eat these pathogens as well. And they're also important in recruiting other immune cells. And they also form something we call nets, so these neutrophil extracellular traps. We'll get to that real soon. So what are these nets? So these are, this is a neutrophil, so here we have a mixture of all these pathogens. So this neutrophil, what's it doing? It's shooting out all these little tentacles, these little protein fibers. So they're able to kind of ensnare. It's kind of like a, that's why they, it's a really clever um, acronym. Why? Because it is like a throw net. It's able to throw out all these protein structures to help ensnare and entangle all these pathogens. So it's harder for these pathogens to move around once they're snagged in this net. So the thing is that they're very abundant, but there's another reason why they're abundant. Neutrophils, during their activity and trying to defend your body against these pathogens, just like in that previous scene from Guardians of the Galaxy, they're very expendable. So they're there in the quantities, but this is why you have so many of them. A lot of them die in the process. So in that previous example, it's kind of like, this is how neutrophils are. They swarm all this, these foreign and, and bacteria and pathogens, but they also die during the process. So again, it's not coincidental that neutrophils are very abundant. They often die during the process, but by, just by sheer numbers, they're able to be your first bo your body's first line of defenses against foreign invading bacteria. Now, what's this gnarly thing right here? So this is pus, and from this infection, again, this is right next to your nail. That's why it's called paronychia. So it's infecting the skin right near near your nail bed, right? So the thing about pus, why is it white? Well, it's not only the dead bacteria, it's also a lot of pus is made up of dead white cells, particularly neutrophils. That's making up a lot of the, the that substance called pus. So, so a lot of this pus right here, it's all those dead neutrophils because remember, a lot of them die in the line of duty. So macrophages, neutrophils, and immune cells release chemicals that cause this thing called inflammation. So what is inflammation? 